Welcome to the Sicilian Secret Diet Plan Podcast. Be well deliciously. Buongiorno and benvenuti to the Sicilian Secret Diet Health Tips. Today we're going to talk about grains and uh, we're going to go through the whole series of different ancient grains, their health benefits and how you can use them nutritionally. And I'm very excited about it because I do use a lot of ancient grains in my bread preparation, pasta preparations, and the texture, the, the depth of the flavor, and of course the nutrition content is uh, excellent. So healthy ancient grains are a group of uh, <laughs> gra grains of uh, pseudo cereals. Pseudo cereals are uh, seeds are used as grains. They've been unchanged for thousands of years. And they've been the dietary staples for many uh, centuries in China, India, the Middle East. Um, and they slowly have become more popular uh, in the Western culture. And they have not been processed and they're packed with vitamins, minerals, much more than all the other widespread grains that and that we're used today. And ancient grains or whole grains or complex carbohydrates have a lot of polyphenols and uh, substances in, in them that help improve health. Like they reduce heart disease, they reduce risk of diabetes, they have a lot of fiber. And, uh, and we tend to, uh, in modern nutrition, we tend to uh, clump carbohydrates into one huge category. And you know that's, that's a mistake because carbohydrates include these really healthy ancient grains with processed carbohydrates which are not really healthy like you know those grains like farro and amaranth and all these uh, these great grains in fact the longest living men in the world are from sardinia italy and their diet is 70 percent grain so it can't be the grain that's bad for you you know and we're always emphasizing the two cues quality and quantity of your food. Absolutely. So we have uh, great grains like amaranth, which is a gluten-free grain that has been cultivated for more than 8,000 years. Can you imagine that? Um, for example, only one cup of amaranth that uh, contains about 250 calories uh, um, and nine, pr nine grams of uh, protein, uh, fibers, uh, and uh, many other minerals, and a lot of iron. So a lot of these grains are very good for people who have anemia. And so you will see that most of these grains decrease heart disease, decrease inflammation, um, and can decrease significant even the, the bad cholesterol and increase the good cholesterol, so significantly good. So you can use amaranth in place of rice, in place of couscous, uh, um, add it to soup, add it to stew, because it also increases the creaminess and the bulk. So another healthy grain is barley. This is one of the most ancient grains and it was widely used in ancient Rome. In fact, the gladiators were called horderai, or those who eat barley. This is an interesting thing because the gladiators uh, would eat things that uh, gave them a lot of energy. And today, a lot of professional athletes are finding that a whole grain vegetarian diet is actually increasing their performance. There's a growing number of NFL football players. So, barley, like... I can't do it. No, can't, we have to start all over again because she has a great ancient grain, probably one of the oldest, is amaranth. Amaranth is extremely nutritious, gluten-free grain, and has been cultivated for more than 8,000 years. Can you imagine that? Um, one, cook, one cup of cooked amaranth that has 250 calories, um, nine grams of protein, uh, five grams of, pro of um, fibers, and uh, many other 
vitamins and uh, minerals contains 29% of uh, the daily recommended use of uh, iron and has been linked so to many health benefits. It decreases inflammation, um, in decreases the total cholesterol, increases the good cholesterol, the HDL, so can be used in place of rice or couscous, quinoa, um, and you can add it to your soups or your stews, makes it bulkier and make it creamier, more thick. So great ancient grain to use. Another great grain is barley. And uh, you know, Sandra does most of the cooking, but I make a barley uh, stew that is really good. And it, this is a, um, a grain that was used commonly in ancient Rome, so for thousands of years. And um, gladiators that used them were called horderi, or those who eat barley, because they found, gave them a lot of energy. And uh, in fact, today in modern sports, uh, NFL football players and other professional athletes are using more and more veg vegetarian ways of eating and, and grains to, uh, for their energy. So barley like oats has a high concentration of beta-glucan, which is a soluble fiber and reduces the bad cholesterol. And the U.S. FDA has approved foods that have high levels of beta-glucan as heart healthy because three grams of beta-glucan can reduce the bad cholesterol for up to about 7%. That's, that's very good. That is it also, quantity. It also helps immunity and skin health. One of the grains I use a lot uh, is uh, kamet. Um, Kamet's great. Uh, it's, uh, it, it's high in fiber, nutrient dense uh, uh, grain. Uh, it is gluten, a gluten grain, it's not a gluten free gra grain, but the gluten is easily absorbed, easily processed. So for people that have gluten sensitivity, it's actually very good. Lots of fibers, seven grams for a, for a cup. Zinc, niacine, which is vitamin B3. All these grains have a lot of, uh, are rich in vitamin B complex. And uh, it, it, it reduces blood sugar levels. So, so all these grains actually, carbohydrates help to manage diabetes, which is very interesting. We don't have to be scared. So, a, they, de de especially kama, decreases a hormone that promotes inflammation, reduces cholesterol, um, and, and, and like I said before, manages uh, insulin levels and blood sugar. It does have gluten though. So uh, it, uh, if you have true celiac or true gluten intolerance, you know, it's, uh, it may not be the best grain. But other, for the vast majority of people that don't have celiac or or um, gluten intolerance, it's, it's a great grain. And, and kamet is chewy, has an interesting texture to it, <clears throat> and also can be added to stew or summer salads, and, and the flour, I use it for pasta. Another great grain is millet. This has been, uh, this has been cultivated for over 10,000 years, uh, and it's widely consumed in Africa, Indian, and Asian countries. Uh, so it's a whole grain. It's rich both in soluble and insoluble fibers. And it's a very good, what we call a prebiotic. These undigestible fibers, the, the good microbiome in our gut uses them for food to produce things like, uh, like energy for the, the gut. And it's high in calcium. And uh, it's very healthy for the blood vessels of our, in our bodies. It's the endothelial layer of our bodies really benefit from this. And it's good for bone health. So it's not just milk or, or milk kind of products that help with bone health, it's even grains. So grains are important for our overall and, and It also health. has a, a detoxifying effect where the, you know, combining... Another great grain is a sorghum, is one of the most consumed grain worldwide. Actually, I didn't know much about it, so it was interesting to see that uh, is also a great um, favorite grain in terms of nutrition, nutrition value, the amount of 
fat, uh, magnesium, copper, selenium, um, protein uh, that that it has. And then in, selenium, you know, the sorghum has about uh, uh, a serving of so uh, sorghum has about twenty five percent of the daily need for selenium, which is very important for thyroid function. So all these grains have different effects, different beneficial effects. Yeah, some are better for bone um, health, some are ben better for uh, thyroid health, some are better for uh, uh, anemia, to treat anemia, but overall, they're all very good. And, so the, and they all have antioxidants. And again, we bring this up over and over again. Free radicals that form as a byproduct of metabolism can damage cells. So you need antioxidants to clean these things out of your system. So sorghum is also a gluten-free grain. So it can be used easily for people who have, or celiac can be added to flowers, can be added to soups, can be added to uh, salads. So great. You know, another interesting thing that we didn't mention before about amaranth, amaranth is, uh, has been around for over 10,000 years, and the ancient Aztecs, Incas, and Mayans used this, and uh, when the Spanish conquistadors came, they felt that they were the locals, they wanted to eliminate the local population, so they, they eliminated all these, these fields, and then they, this, they got lost for many years until about a uh, a little while ago, it was re rediscovered in Mexico, which is kind of interesting. And amaranth is is very nutritious, very help, very helpful. And again, can be used for for salads, can be used for soups, it can be used as a flour for any bread preparation or pasta preparations. And has a high concentration of things like gallic acid, hydroxybenzoic acid, which are you know super antioxidants. They decrease cancer risk, heart disease risk. Another great grain is teff. Teff I recently discovered after eating uh, at a African restaurant, an Ethiopian restaurant, and it's great. The, the, the taste was excellent. It's one of the best grains to fight anemia. Yeah, our daughter re, you know, graduated part of her degree at Columbia. We went to a great restaurant, an Ethiopian restaurant, and this is where we, we ate this great. Discovered the teff. The teff was unbelievably delicious. So the studies that were done in uh, um, pregnant women in Ethiopia, and they found that there was no anemia because they were using teff as the primary source of their grain. A really good source of iron, just like meat. So and as tiny as they are, they are the smallest grain uh, is rich in vitamin C, uh, vitamin B, and zinc. And so zinc has been found to be super important for cellular health and immunity, and it's a great source of zinc. So, and, and you know, there was a, a study in uh, 592 pregnant Ethiopian women. And they found that uh, eating teff daily was linked to a significant lower risk of anemia that's fr frequently seen in, in, uh, in pregnant women. So again, easy to use in soups, in stews, in gluten-free baked goods. Now, one of my favorite um, grains is oats. And uh, because it just has a significant heart health aspect to it. It's also called a vena sativa. And the oats we consume today originally uh, came from the wild red oat native to Asia. And this is a whole grain, gluten free, and it's a rich source of many nutrients and dietary fiber. And uh, a lot of minerals and vitamins and, uh, and it has some special qualities to it because it has, a, it's one of the best sources of beta glucan. And again, uh, the American Heart Association has uh, deemed this heart healthy because it lowers LDL cholesterol to a significant degree, lowers blood sugar, and also the beta-glucan makes you feel full. So it decreases obesity because it increases satiety. So again, when people are afraid of eating gluten, eating carbohydrates, um, they have to, to really understand nutrition and these kind of carbohydrates are actually helpful for diabetes, for 
cholesterol and uh, to maintain weight, healthy weight. And also, the inner lining of all our arteries and our bodies, which we have thousands of miles, in, uh, have an, a lining called endothelium. This is, needs a substance called nitric oxide. And oats have a special substance called the venothramides that increase this nitric oxide, which helps arteries be more flexible and, me, and uh, lowers blood pressure. And uh, it's a, it's a, it's so a great again, thing for the heart. And every, every chronic disease, every, every chronic disease has a vascular component to it. So it's not just heart health, it's brain health. It's uh, health of all the organs in your body. Everything that goes on in your body has a, has a vascular component. And as we've mentioned before, eating healthy, staying with the Mediterranean diet, rich in grains, besides fruits and vegetables, helps with prevent the depression. And the best kind of oats are the steel cut or oat groats. The instant oatmeal that's used sometimes is probably not as good because they pre-cook it and the, and the germ and the fiber is, is removed in that process. So you really don't want that, you really want all that stuff in the, in the oat to make it as, as, uh, as healthful as possible. So the whole grain is the best grain you can buy with all these grains because the germ has the highest amount of nutrients, actually. Another great new grain that I discovered during this research is Freak It. I don't know how to... Freak A. It's F-R-E-E-K-E-H. -E -E and this is actually gluten uh, grain and uh, has uh, a lot of nutrients. I haven't tried it yet. I just received it uh, in the mail. And I'm excited to try, and I'll let you know in the next uh, podcast how, or Instagram, how, what kind of a grain this, this is. Um, all these grains, again, reduce uh, cholesterol. And especially this grain I, I read has a lot of carotenoid. Yeah, it has specifically has lutein and zeaxanthin, which are great for eye health, prevents cataracts and, and glaucoma, which is so, very important. So as you can see, when you eat a variety of these grains and you have a little bit of this and tomorrow I have a little bit of that, you actually can take care of every part of your body um, and prevent uh, any inflammatory disease and deterioration disease. All these grains are good anti-aging. Yeah, this is why we recommend a variety of foods, a variety of grains, a variety of vegetables, a variety of fruits, because each one has a special concentration of, uh, of nutrients in it. Now, I just want to say a word about gluten because, you know, gluten-free diet has become somewhat of a fad diet. Everyone thinks it's, it's healthy. It's a protein. Gluten is a protein that's found in grains, including wheat, barley, and rye. And there are some people, about 1% of the population, that have something called celiac disease, which is a serious, serious disease where they have an immunity to the gluten and they develop damage to their intestinal tracts. Those, if you have celiac disease, you cannot eat gluten. Then there's another disease called gluten intolerance, where you don't have celiac disease, but when you eat gluten, you develop gastrointestinal symptoms. And that's a real disease, and a small percentage of the population has that. But the vast majority of the population eat gluten like we've been eating for 10,000 years without a problem. And, uh, and I think- We use the whole grains and the ancient whole, grains. Exactly. Because those are the grains that we can tolerate best. For example, einkorn is another great ancient grain that we use a lot, a great delicious in, to make pasta, to make bread. And what, what happens is that the, the, the gluten is so easy to digest that even people who have significant gluten intolerance can tolerate uh, einkorn. Yeah, one of the problems is that, you know, people that switch to a gluten-free diet, you know, gluten-free foods tend to have more sugar, more fat, less fiber. Uh, they're actually less nutritious. And so you may think you're doing something that's healthful while in you're in, you know, you're doing something that's the opposite of healthful. It's not, not as good. And gluten-free diets tend to be uh, more expensive also. So they're, you know, if you, uh, you don't really need to be gluten-free, there's no real reason for it. And often they increase your weight. Right. And then you can eat so, your, and 
Anyway, the, you know, the gluten-free diet is somewhat of a fad. In fact, many people, when they go to Europe and they eat quality foods, they can eat gluten foods without a problem. Farro or spelt is another excellent ancient grain. We use it a lot. Again, try to, to get the, the ones that has the germ This is it. one of my favorites because it's so tasty and so chewy. It's a great grain. And we make a risotto with it, oh, uh, which, it. Is, uh, which is really, really delicious. Lots of uh, vitamins, lot of, lots of uh, minerals, lots of zinc. In yeah, it. it has a very good concentration of zinc. A serving has almost 50% of your daily need of zinc, so it's very good for immunity. So it uh, you know, has been used in, in uh, Europe, especially in Italy, for uh, thousands of years. Eating and these grains can lower your risk of chronic illnesses including cancer. So yeah, it's the polyphenols that are in these grains and especially in farro are an excellent source of these uh, anti heart disease, anti diabetes, anti cancer. So it's 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 uh, and then farro has a you know all the grains have a lot of protein and they're particularly uh, easily absorbable protein. So and farro has a good source of protein. So that is very interesting and important to remember. All these grains have proteins. Because when we think about grains, we think only about carbohydrates, and it's not the case. Even semolina pasta has about 40% of uh, proteins in it. So semolina pasta, uh, semolina, semolina is the white pasta, the, the not Process. whole grain pasta, but it, even that has a good amount of protein in it. Correct, which, which is amazing. We don't think about that. We, have to, we think about that we're eating just purely carbohydrates, but it's not the case. You have to remember that animals get their protein from plants. So a lot of plants have protein in them. And uh, you just, uh, for the most part, eliminate the middleman and eat the plants. But we're not against eating meats. We just think that in the Mediterranean, in the Sicilian version of the Mediterranean diet, uh, we eat meats in low quantities, small portions, infrequently. We eat a lot of plants and a lot of grains as part of our diet. And these grains have amino acids. And some of the amino acids we do not produce. And amino acids are essential in the production of uh, proteins. So if we don't have them, we cannot maintain our proteins. Yeah, these are called the essential amino acids, the one you have to get from food that you can't produce. So legumes cereals, which are these ancient, the pseudograins, and the whole grains. Well, an interesting phenomenon is that uh, a lot of grains don't have an amino acid called lysine. And legumes, or you know, beans and lentils, have lysine. And that's why, over years, they've combined these dishes of legumes with grains to make it a complete protein source which is amazing that over trial and error, our ancestors have given this as a gift of knowledge. And our book, The Sicilian Secret Diet Plan, has several of these recipes. But every time you, have, you make a soup that has legumes in it, add one of these cereal. Choose the one that you like and rotate them because it's gonna give you a better nutrition than a steak would. Yeah, it's a great thing. You know, you mix and match. You test out these grains, and uh, and you'll you'll you know you'll find the ones you like the best. But I would try, you know, because of what we're telling you that each grain has a different concentration of good nutrients. It's good to mix them up and use them all, uh, you know, in, a, in your repertoire. And it, and it's they're easy kept in the refrigerator after you boil them, so you can add them to soups or salads every day. Yeah, for instance, you can make oats, uh, organic, steel-cut oats. What I do is I make a batch of it, and uh, I keep it in the refrigerator, and I put a little bit of my smoothie, or I, I heat it up, and I eat it as a quick meal, as a quick snack, or breakfast. Uh, so it, it's, you know, it's easy to use these grains on a regular basis if you think ahead. Quinoa is another uh, uh, interesting grain. grain has been very popular in the past few years. Everybody buys it, everybody eats it, everybody makes it. Um, very nutritious grain. 
um, and delicious, you know, and it has a lot of uh, fiber in it. Uh, it has a lot of uh, manganese. It has a lot of magnesium. So, you know, again, when we think of bone health, we immediately think of dairy, but a lot of these grains have everything you need for good bone health. So that's important to, uh, you know, keep this as part of your, your food, um, and you know, again, your food very source. good for mental health. Right? Very good for mental health. And also has uh, antioxidants called quercetin and camphorol that are very good antioxidants. They're very good antiviral agents, anti-inflammatory. And in fact, during the COVID epidemic, we found that quercetin, which we see a lot in, in, these, uh, in, in quinoa, is, uh, is, is helpful to prevent COVID or to actually treat COVID. So we have a mixture of carbohydrates and proteins in all these grains that help to keep your weight down. Interesting enough, right? That you don't have to eat meat, high protein meat diet to keep your, your weight down, but actually the opposite. A diet that is rich in all these grain. Bulgur wheat is another great... Also called cracked wheat. Is a gluten-free grain Excellent. I love bulgur wheat. I add it everywhere. It's very hearty and a very, uh, very good tasting. Very good tasting. So it actually enhances the, the flavor of uh, your soups or your salads. So that's one of my favorite. So hopefully you've enjoyed this, uh, this analysis or review of many of these ancient grains. There's other ancient grains too, but this is, these are the ones we use the most. So we wanted to, you know, share that with you uh, and also share the health benefits. Absolutely. Eat ancient grains and you live longer and, and deliciously as always. As we say, live well deliciously. Dalla mia cucina, alla tua cucina, con amore. Buona giornata. Thank you. Ciao.